today i will not be in a position to start with the bond valuation chapter because the chapter is having lot of commonalities with what we discuss in ipcc in the area called as cost of capital remember kaba we discuss chapter called as what cost of capital cost of debt cost of preference cost of equity right or not now the cost of capital chapter only he is going to be discussing another angle in this area called as bond valuation so that chapter involve lot of compounding discount and time value money calculations or not no i don't like taking risk even if my return is less return less means what done if i don't cover more portions i want to have what a certainty in what understanding so whether you like it or not i am going to have a brief discussion about one basic chapter which you should start the studying from cpt onwards call us what time value fund what is it ma cpt discuss about compounding discounting or not ipc is also discussed now it will be discussing in final i am teaching this for third time is or no cpt ipc and then final we'll have a brief discussion please don't be indifferent even if you know it don't be indifferent because you may know time value of money but uh, come to my way then how i speak uh, that language will be used throughout this subject to follow perpetuate anything so just uh, let us tune together the concept of time value of money we have a discussion not rush through it it is an investment made for the remaining chapters to progress i started with the ifm because it has not got so much link with what time value of money but the bonds onwards will be having lot of issues to be discussed involving the tvm will be having introduction to that and then go for the bond valuation chapter now give the heading time value of money Shall we start up now? Okay. See, the discussion will be made as if we don't know anything about compounding and discounting. Then only it will be proper. Either I should leave it or do from what beginning. Presuming something known and then something not known will be rushing through the issues. so i am not going to do problems i am going to only help you to understand how to discount and compound the various types of cash flows above that only we are going to discuss now in this area called as time value of money okay we will discuss every stage have a notes i'll be having four stage discussion of this tvm introduction we'll discuss and then have the notes at the respective stages and if you want to have more grip over the time value of money you can just do the first chapter in the ipcc study material there are so many problems are given regarding the time value of money don't think it is waste of time it is always worth investing because in that chapter itself we have irr calculations we have annuity calculations everything is there in what time value of money chapter it is not a chapter to be discounted the chapter to be what a compounded every time by revising again again are you following not now it is a very very important chapter okay i'll just reinforce the what has been learned in ipcc before we start with our final syllabus once again in the next class from bond valuation can we start or not now see i just ask you a question suppose i promise to give you 10 lakh rupees you have missed the word suppose got it ba no so that's why i put here and the recording also done you should not come with a pro note right or not so suppose i promise to give you 10 lakh rupees the question is do you want it today or i can i give you a year later Do you want today or can I give it year later? No. Not even today you are believing. You want the money? You want? No, it's okay. Now, why you don't want it a year later? Tell me. 
because we may feel that today money is more valuable than money received on a future day. That's a question. Why today money is more valuable? Tell me. Why today money is more, no, more valuable? Somebody said no risk. And another is what? No inflation. No risk and then what? No inflation. And I forgot. In IFM chapter, just when we conclude now, in which one concept I have not yet discussed, that is called as international features effect. It's called as what? International features effect. I will do that in the capital budgeting problem, where it involves real rate, inflation rate, nominal rate, etc., etc. I will do at that time the international features effect in overseas capital budgeting. Can I say? So that alone is not covered. I will come back to this chapter. Tell me, why today money is more valuable? Because of what? inflation and because of risk very simple to understand what a 10 lakh can buy today the same 10 lakh cannot buy after one year due to rise in prices of commodities whether or not in that case today money has got more purchasing power hence has got more value right or not now even if it is zero inflation, even if it is what? Zero inflation, we will still like to receive the money what? Today because today is certain, tomorrow is what? Uncertain. After one day when I come, I ask you, who are you? That means what? Money gone, right or not? Ne, correct, huh? or, I may be Harish Chandra, I may be giving you what? Money, but I should be alive after one year, yes or no? Ne, correct, huh? Or you should be alive after what? One year. Or both may be alive, but we should be able to meet each other, right or not? In that case, Tomorrow is always what? Tomorrow only it is uncertain. Today is what? Uh, certain. Always cash flow tomorrow is risky. Tomorrow cash flow has got less purchasing power. Therefore money received today is what? Uh, more valuable. Point number one. That's point. It's all known. That is why everybody gives interest as well as what? Takes interest for compensating the inflation as well as risk. Can I go say? No. This interest percentage only, we call it as time value of money. I use the word loosely what? Interest. Even dividend is received only for what? Time value of money. So all profits received by a company only by for what? Time value of money. I use the word interest loosely because it is easily understandable. Can I present or not? No. Here time value of money, interest rate is zero or not? No. Say, I put my money in Reserve Bank of India deposit, in RBI bond. I put the money in what? Reserve Bank of India bond. They give me around 6.5% interest, for example. Am I happy or not? No. Even if I'm unhappy, they'll give only that interest. So not at all. <laughs> Don't be greedy. Yeah? Okay. I put the money in what? RBI. They offer what? 6.5% interest. They're happy or not? Yeah, to some extent, happy. Same money, same or 10 lakh rupees, I don't put in RBI, I don't put in Reserve Bank of India, I put in RBF, I put in what? RBF. What is RBF? Rai uh, Bata Benefit Fund. I put in what? RBF. And they also ask the, offer the same 600 percent interest. Will I invest or will not invest? Or? The same 600 percent RB is giving, I won't put in RBF. Yes or no? For both entities, they are purchasing money from me, yes or no? But the price they are giving is what? Different. He offers 6.5, he should offer what? 15 or 16 percent. Why? Because of risk. If I take more risk, I should be expecting what? More returns. But not. In that case, the time value of money has got two components. One is inflation rate and number two is for what? Risk premium. Everybody following all. So the interest rate has got two components. Inflation rate and then risk premium. Put together, I will be getting what? The time value of money. Point number two. Accept or not? So this is what is the first stage of discussion. Time value of money is 1 rupee received today is not equal to 1 rupee received in future due to the following two reasons. Name the two reasons here. Yes. Second reason is inflation. Today's money has more value than money received in future. This is referred to as a time value of money. It represents as a percentage. Percentage has got two components. Namely what? Inflation rate. Next is what? Risk premium. Above the risk premium, we'll discuss a separate chapter called as portfolio. We have a chapter called as portfolio management. That chapter mainly discusses only about what? The discovery of discount rate. Is a discount rate discovery. Invest the focus will be always on what? Uh, risk premium. We'll have the more extensive discussion later. Can I present or not? Now. This is a first stage. Write right down point number one. Give the time value of money. Point number one. 
rupee one received today, rupee one received today is not equal to rupee one received today is not equal to rupee one received in future. Rupee one received today is not equal to rupee one received in future due to following two reasons. Rupee one received today is not equal to rupee one received in future due to following two reasons. A. Risk. A. Risk. B. Inflation. A. Risk. B. Inflation. So, what do you mean by risk here? Uncertainty. Inflation is what? Decrease in purchasing power. That should be understood. Can I go say? Point number two. Today's money has more value than money received in future. Now, first point I said they are not equal. I said, yes or no? Second point I am just elaborating it. Today's money has more value than money received in future. Today's money has more value than money received in future. This is referred to as this is referred to as this is referred to as time value of money. From now on, let's write TVM for quick writing. This is referred to as time value of money. Point number two or three and three. It is represented as percentage. Point number three. It is represented as percentage. And the percentage has two components. It is represented as percentage. And the percentage has two components. It is represented as percentage. And the percentage has two components. A. Inflation rate. A. Inflation rate. And B. Risk premium. A. Inflation rate. And B. Risk premium and B, risk premium. First stage introduction to this chapter is over. Can I proceed or not? No. Stage 2. Please listen here. Okay. Suppose you receive at the end of first year 5,000, at the end of second year 10,000, at the end of third year, 10,000. Everyone understand the cash flows or not? So, year 1, 5,000 cash flow. Year 2, 10,000. Year 3, 10,000. How to read it? End of first year, end of second year, end of third year. Today means how we write? Zero. Zero means what? Beginning of the first year. Now, can I say I have received 25,000? No. Yes or no? no? Why I cannot add it? Because all these numbers have got different values. To just show an analogy, I received 5,000 rupees, 10,000 dollars and 10,000 pounds. Understood? There's no complete chapter here. Yeah? I received what? 5,000 rupees, 10,000 dollars and 10,000 pounds. Can I add and say I received 25,000? No. I received 25,000 currencies with different values. I do not. In that case, what I should do? Convert everything into rupees or dollar or pound. Bring it into the same terms and then only add using the exchange rate. Are you following or not? So, how I cannot add a dollar, rupee, pound? Why I cannot add? Because a dollar has a different value, a rupee has a different value, a pound has got what? Different value. Like that, one rupee in first year, one rupee in second year, one rupee in third year has got what? Different values because how a pound, rupee, dollar can have different value. First year, second year, and third rupee. Rupee is not having different value due to what time value of money, and we should bring it to what common period and then add it. Everybody, are you following or not? So, this calculation is wrong. What I can do? I have two options. How many options here? Two options either bring all the future cash flows to which date today's terms 5000 after one year. What is the value today? 10,000 after two years. What is the value today? 
10,000 after 3 years. What value today? I can bring all the cash flows to what term? Today's term and then add it. That is called as present value. It is called as what? Present value. The technique used is called as discounting. And the cash flow is called as discounted cash flow. Respond. Yes or no? Similarly, 5,000 is after 1 year. What are the value after 3 years? 10,000 after 2 years. What are the value after 3 years? The 10,000 after 3 years. The value is what? Same. I can take all the cash flows to a given maturity date and then add it that is called as what future value or maturity value and it is done using a technique called as compounding the cash flow is called as compounded cash flow everybody yes or no so with the cash flow i can do two things either reverse it back or what take it forward if i reverse it back i call as what discounting and take it forward, i call as what compounding everybody are you following or not so this is the next slide of discussion here cash flow Cash flow at the end of first year, what is the value? Today. At the end of second year, what is the value? Today. At the end of third year, what is the value? Today. These three numbers in aromas can be added? Huh? Yes. I cannot add 5, 10 and 10. But I can add what? The present value of 5, 10 and 10 because they are all in what? Today's terms. Or first year cash flow, what is the value at the end of third year? Second year cash flow, what is the value at the end of third year? And third year cash flow remains what? Same. Because end of third year only now. I can add these two plus this 10,000 because everything in what? Future terms. Everybody following uh, now. That's what is discussed now. First year is called as discounting. And second is called as what? Compounding. It is wrong to add cash flow received at different points of time because they have different values due to time value of money. So the next issue is we should bring all the cash flows to a common time frame and then add. If it is brought to today's term, it is referred to as present value or discounted cash flow. And if you take it to a future period, it is called as a future value or compounded cash flow. Discounted cash flows will be obtained using technique called as discounting and compounded cash flow using a technique called as compounding. With this, the second stage introduction is over. Everybody following or not? Now, right on point number three or four? Uh? Point number four. Okay, now, I think we need not copy this example. We are final, more than IPC. Right or not? Now, I'll just skip these two slides to save some time. Can I pass it? Now, right on. Point number four. It is wrong to add cash flows. It is wrong to add cash flows received at different points of time. It is wrong to add cash flows received at different points of time. It is wrong to add cash flows received at different times points of time. Because, because they have different values. Because they have different values due to, because they have different values due to time value of money. They have different values due to time value of money. They have different values due to time value of money. Can I proceed or not? No. Point number four or five? Five. We should bring all the cash flows to common time frame. We should bring all the cash flows to common time frame and then add. We should bring all the cash flows to common time frame and then add. If it is brought to today's terms, if it is brought to today's terms, it is referred as present value. If it is brought to today's terms, it is referred as present value. It is referred as present value or discounted cash flow. If it is brought to today's terms, it is referred as present value or discounted cash flow. Continue. If it is taken to a future date, same point you continue. If it is taken to a future date, it is called, if it is taken to a future date, it is called what? Future value. It is called future value or compounded cash flow. It is called future value or compounded cash flow. Point number four of five or six? Six. Point number six. 
okay we know discounting and compounding i need not dictate the other point i just leave it can i was it now let me go to the next stage of discussion okay. cash flows are like river flows got by some their flows we call as what cash flow okay see the flow of cash can be in different patterns can be in what different patterns there are so many varieties of cash flow patterns to start with i classify into four types how many times there four types the four types of cash flow streams one can see in most of the problems or most of the market instruments itself can i was not now the cash flows can be of the four types okay now one is single cash flow annuity cash flow perpetuity cash flow and multiple and even cash flow tell me what are the four types of cash flow streams single cash flow annuity cash flow perpetuity cash flow multiple and even cash flow very simple if a cash flow occurs only once i call as what single cash flow very simple today i deposit some money in an fd i deposit suppose 10 lakh rupees in what fd for 5 years first year any money will be got up like any money in second year no any money in third year no any money in fourth year no i get one maturity value in what fifth year so the fd gives me cash flow how many times here once in what date maturity date that cash flow can be called as a single cash flow everybody yes or no annuity cash flow means the cash flow occurs number of times the amount is same same amount occurs what number of times i call as what cash flow annuity cash flow for example you pay house rent you pay what house rent every month house rent changes are no. the house rent is what same on monthly basis then the house rent can be called as what an annuity for 12 months in the bank or no or you take an emi paid with what bank for years together so no in that case does the emi change month after month no it is the same amount is going to be paid what always that emi is called as what cash flow annuity cash flows let's point is so no so single cash flow is a cash flow received only once and annuity means what same cash flow receive how many years yeah n number of years i call as annuity cash flow are you following up now so year cash flow for year 3 it is 1 lakh tell me i get how much rupees 1 lakh how many times once when at the end of third year annuity 1 to 3 years 1 lakh what is the meaning of that i receive how much rupees 1 lakh how many times 3 times at the end of first year 1 lakh at the end of second year another 1 lakh at the end of third year another 1 lakh in some writing year 1 1 lakh year 2 1 lakh year 3 1 lakh in normal writers what 1 2 3 how much rupees here 1 lakh rupees is annuity cash flow respond yes or no perpetuity means i receive 1 to infinite years one how many years here infinite years forever we call it as what forever 1 lakh rupees is called as what perpetuity Perpetuity is an annuity. It is what? Annuity, but without an end. Are you following? Huh? <laughs> what a perpetuity is an annuity without an end. We call as what? Perpetuity. Very simple. We study in this bond chapter something called as perpetual bond. What bond here? Perpetual bond. It is also called as irredeemable bond. What bond here? Irredeemable bond. I buy a perpetual bond for 1 lakh. How much is here? 1 lakh. It gives me a coupon or interest of 10%. Every year the company will give the bond holder. How much is 10,000, 10,000, 10,000 rupees. For how many years? Till the company is wound up. Till the company is what? Wound up. When the company will be wound up? Yeah, the question should not be asked. It is in our space or because I don't form a company to wind up. Yeah, we feel that company is going to last what? Forever. Perpetual succession. Yes or no? That means when a company issues an irredeemable preference as or an irredeemable bond, a perpetual instrument, I am expecting to get from that particular instrument a cash flow forever. That's what we call as what? Perpetuity. Don't speak Vedanta here saying that, sir, you know, one day it has to close. At least I will die. Yes or no? When I say perpetuity, I don't say there is no end. I say I don't know the end. No end means what? Then there is a, that perpetuity is the world itself is what? Perpetuity only. But punch lakh for me. When I don't know the end, because I may receive from the bond for five years, 
or I may even live for what? Uh, 80 years, we don't know. When I don't know the end, it may be a pension which is what given, it may be an annuity bonds, it may be a perpetual bonds, coupons and so on. All these cash flows can be called as what cash flow? Perpetuity cash flow. Respond, are you following or not? Uh, multiple and even is what number of projects gives you okay every year you get what different different amount for a finite years which i call as multiple and even cash flow everybody following on can multiple and even run to perpetuity it may may not run but i will not be able to estimate because any business i can estimate a forecast cash flow for five years from 16 onwards i only go for a perpetual estimation are you following what i am saying I may estimate up to 5 years, I may estimate up to what? 50 years, even estimate up to what? 1000 years. Beyond that, I don't have the energy to estimate. Yes or no? Okay, what is, after 1000 years, it is going to give me so much profit forever. Are you what I am saying? So somewhere we have to stop multiple and even, and then switch over to what? Perpetuity. We will see this in the business valuation later. Are you what I am saying? So these are the various types of cash flow patterns that can be there. Apart from that, there is something called as growing perpetuity also that exists. We will be discussing during the share valuation later. Everybody following on? So these are different types of cash flow streams. Can I proceed or not? Now, what is our discussion all about? Free time value of money. Exactly. Correct, ma? Okay. Now, I did not ask you a question. I made a pause here. Can I proceed? Now, so after three years, I am going to see what? One lakh. What is the value today? First year, second year, third year, one lakh, one lakh, one lakh. Is the value today three lakhs or not? No. It should be what? Less than three lakh. What is the value today? One lakh for infinity. What is the value today? One lakh, four lakh, three lakhs for first, second, third year. What is the value today? We learn how to find a present value of a single cash flow, annuity cash flow, perpetuity, and then what? Multiple and even cash flow. Because this is all we are doing in the bond problem mostly. Are you following what I am saying? We find out the value of a bond. I define as present value of the future cash flows. A bond can be a zero coupon bond like a single cash flow. A bond can be an annuity bond. A bond can be a perpetual bond. A bond can give me coupons and redemption. All this can happen. For that only we are discussing the time value of money. Everybody following or not? Because at that time, I should not discuss with you time value of money or you discuss with the bond concept. Everybody following? Huh? Now, can I proceed further? Now, these are four types of cash flows. Point number four or five or six. Huh? Point number six. Copy this. Types of cash flows. Friends coming up, huh? Those not copy, raise your hand. Yeah, I finished. Um, please. Shall I proceed? No. Point number six or seven? Point number seven. We will now learn how to calculate 
point number seven, we will now learn how to calculate the present value of the above cash flows. We will now learn how to calculate the present value of the above cash flows. We will now learn how to calculate the present value of the above cash flows. How to calculate the present value of the above cash flows. Now, one thing in all our examples, I will assume 10% as discounted. What rate? 10%. Don't always think that time will happen means 10%. We use that as what? Example 10% as discount rate. Can we start or not? No. Okay. Example 1 single cash flow. Example 1 single cash flow. Year cash flow. Year cash flow. Year 3, 1 lakh. Year cash flow. Year 3, 1 lakh. Interest at 10%. Year 3, 1 lakh. Interest at 10%. Calculate present value. Interest at 1%. Calculate present value. Okay. Now, let me discuss and then we can have the notes. Can I proceed? Now. 1 lakh is received after how many years? 3 years. What is the value today? To put it as a live example, I want a maturity value of 1 lakh. So a deposit today 1 lakh, more than 1 lakh, less than 1 lakh. <laughs> we did it in money market days, right or not? You have to risk a deposit what? Less than 1 lakh because that along with the interest will grow to how much rupees? 1 lakh. How much will be deposit today? Present value of 1 lakh. That is going to be calculated. That's fine. Yes or no? No. We all know the formula that future value, also called as maturity value, future value is equal to present value into 1 plus r power n. Future value is equal to present value into 1 plus r power n. Can I proceed or not? No. Or you can write along with me, write down future value is equal to future value is equal to present value into 1 plus r power n. Please. Okay. I know the maturity value or not? Yes. How much I want? 1 lakh. I will write here. 1 lakh is equal to. Do I know the present value? No. Present value into. R is how much percent? 10 percent. 10 percent can be called as 0.10. I don't know. 1 plus 0.10 is what? 1.10. I am depositing for how many years? 3 years. 1 lakh is equal to. Present value into 1.10 power 3. I write like this. Present value is equal to present value is equal to 1 lakh into 1 by 1.10 power 3. Present value is equal to 1 lakh into 1 by 1.10 power 3. Respond. Are you following or not? No. Which is equal to 1 lakh into 1 by 1.10 power 3. If you take the calculator, what is the number here? Point seven five one three. 1 lakh 1 by 1 1.10 power 3 gives you 0 0.7513. 1 lakh into 0 0.7513 is equal to how much rupees? 75,130. Is equal to 75,130. Can I proceed or not? So, today 75,130 is as good as what? 3 years, 1 lakh. Somebody says, you want 75,130 today or 1 lakh after 3 years? Which you will choose? Both are equally good. Today, 75,130 is equal to what? 1 lakh after 3 years. If you want an interest of 10% from that particular money, everybody following or not? Can I proceed? No. In this case, see, this 75,130, I call as what? Discounted cash flow. It is called as what cash flow? Discounted cash flow. The 1 lakh, I call as cash flow. This is called as what? Cash flow. And this 0.7513, I call it as what? Present value factor. I may be very repetitive. It may be very basic. Plus, please don't discard. You have to get into the calculation mode. Otherwise, later you should not feel confused. Are you following or not? Now, even if you know, participate. Okay. So, 0.7513 is called as what? Present value factor. This 1 lakh is called as what? Cash flow. How if I multiply the dollar with the exchange that I get rupees or not? Like that. Multiply the cash flow with what? Present value factor. I'll be getting what I call as discounted cash flow. So discounted cash flow is equal to cash flow into present value factor. Point number one. Accept or not? 
Now, first thing, discounted cash flow is equal to cash flow into present value factor. Is equal to cash flow into present value factor. Can we proceed to the next stage of discussion? Huh? Now, I hope you are all writing along with me. Huh? Now, see. Let us continue. Different presentation. Here, cash flow, present value factor at 10%, discounted cash flow. Here's a very routine way you would have seen in different books in presentation, right or not? So here cash flow, present value factor and then discounted cash flow. How you fill the, fill the numbers here? Here, year 3. Here 3. What the cash flow I get? 1 lakh. Right along with me. The cash flow I get is how much? 1 lakh. What the present value factor? 0.7513. The discounted cash flow is 75,130. Is the answer. 75,130 is the answer. Is the way of presentation. This point. Can I proceed or not? No. The question is. Sir, how sir we calculated present value factor? Question arises is no? No. I'll just go into PVF discussion now. Calculation of what? Present value factor because I know the year, I know the cash flow. We find out what? PVF. I know the discounted cash flow. Right or not? Now, do along with me. How to calculate? Write down. How to calculate present value factor? How to calculate present value factor? How to calculate present value factor? Okay. I have three ways of getting it. One is formula. First is to calculate using the formula. Second is table. We have a table called as PV table. Second is table. Third is using calculator. Which I will be using. Because I have not given any table at the end of the workbook except for the natural log table, exponential table, now uh, what I say, normal distribution table. Because I never believe in the table, you should be able to calculate on your own, it's much more faster. Can I say it? Now, so formula for PV factor is 1 by 1 plus r power n. The formula is 1 by 1 plus r power n. In our case, it is 1 by 1.10 power 3. 1 by 1.10 power 3 is equal to point nine zero point seven five one three. They get us point seven five one three. The question number may give you the factor. See a table called as C. What table? Present value table. Pre see present value table against R person. How many years? N years. The table will be having percentage and then years. See present value table against odd person, n years. Now we have to see against what person? 10 person. How many years? 3 years. The table will give you this number 0 0.7513. The table will be giving you this number 0 0.7513. Against 10 person, 3 years, it will give you 0 0.7513. Can I proceed? Now, this is, we are going to use very frequently, you should be able to understand it. Now take the calculator, take the one calculator. Do it and then we will write it. Now, here is everything, here is everything. Type what? 1 divided by 1.10. What here? 1 divided by 1.10. How many years? 3 years. Plus is equal to how many times here? 3 times. Is equal to, is equal to, is equal to. What number do you get? 0.7513. Yes or no? So 1 divided by 1.10 is equal to, is equal to, is equal to how many times? 3 times. Gives me 0.7513. Right or not? In that case, calculator, right? First. Step number 1 is what? Type 1 by 1 1.10. Type 1 by 1 1.10. Okay. Press what? Is equal to key. How many times here? 3 times. Don't say always 3 times this problem. Can I proceed? Now. You will be getting the present value factor. That's how one should understand the present value factor. Please. Shh. Now. Big. Because I will ask you to do and tell me the bond calculation. You should be able to know it. I am bringing only to my wavelength. That's all. I don't say you don't know it. I am just only saying what? We can just be on the same footing. Can I proceed? Next. See. How I calculated 0 0.7513? Take the calculator. 1 divided by 1.1 1 .1 is equal to how many times? 3 times. I will be getting 0 0.7513. Matter over. Yes or no? No. What is 0 0.7513? Tell me. 1 rupee after 3 years is equal to what? 75 paise today is personally factored. So 1 lakh rupees after 3 years is equal to how much? 75,130 today is a meaning of present value factor. It's all no. Right on. Next point. Point number 7 or 8. Point number 8. 
or some number. You just continue. In the same, I think you are writing in this example one, no? Continue. Present value factor of, in the same example one, you continue. Present value factor of 0.7513 means, present value factor of 0.7513 means, comma, present value factor of 0.7513 means, comma, rupee 1 received after 3 years is equal to, means, rupee 1 received after 3 years is equal to 75 paise today. Rupee 1 received after 3 years is equal to 75 paise today. Is equal to 75 paise today. If the interest is 10%. Rupee 1 received after 3 years is equal to 75 paise today if the interest is 10 percent. If the interest is 10 percent. Now, can I proceed up? Now, tell me, today 75,130 become how much after 3 years? 1 lakh. Let us see how it becomes and arrive at a conclusion. Can I proceed? Write down. How? Give the heading. How? All are inside example 1. Okay. How? 75,130 matures to 1 lakh. How 75,130 matures to 1 lakh? How 75,130 matures to 1 lakh? Question mark. Can I do it together or not? No. Have two columns, year and cash flow. Year, cash flow. Year 0, how much I invest? 75,130. 75,130. Now, first year, they will give me interest or not? Yes. I am going to have the interest. How much interest they provide? 10%. On 75,130, how much interest? 7,513. First year interest is 7,513. When I total it, at the end of the first year, what is the money in my hand here? 82,643. 82,643. This is the maturity value at the end of the first year or not? No. I am going to calculate once again interest. Tell me interest will be on 75, 130, 82, 643, 82, 643. So what is the interest here? 8264. The interest is 8264. At the end of the second year, my money matures. How much will be here? 90,000. 90,907. 90, now, I am going to have an interest for the third year. Third year interest will be on 75, 82, or 90, 90. What the amount here? 9091. 9091. Yes or no? Now, what is the maturity of the third year? 99,998. Borrow 2 rupees from beggar. The amount is how much base here? 1 lakh. Okay, now, see. In this, this is only thing that is known to you, but I want to highlight a point which I will discuss during realize what I mean bond. Okay. In this calculation, what I assumed is interest is not consumed, interest is what? Reinvested. Interest is not consumed, but what? Reinvested. Compounding and discounting always assumes that interest is reinvested at the rate at which I compound or discount. Are you following that? Now, in an FD, when it deposit 75, 130 and bank says, I'll give you 10% interest for what? 3 years. That means, not only you're earning 10% interest on the FD amount, you also redeposit what? Interest also. On the also 10% is earned. Yes or no? That means it is like a forward rate. It is like what? Forward rate because for these one, two cash flows also, I have decided the interest today itself. Right or not? Yes. Correct? But if I am allowed to consume my interest, what happens is the 7513, I can invest after one year. The interest rate has increased what? 12%. Now, I need not put in this deposit. I can invest in what? At 12%. Everybody, RL, find out what I am saying. That's a disadvantage of what? Accumulated deposit is as well as binding me with what? An interest for all my cash flows. How many years here? Given number of years should be understood when a compound or discount using a given interest rate. RL, find out what I am saying. So, in the discounting or compounding, I Presume that I am locking myself with what uh, the interest rate at which I am compounding 
or discounting. And this concept is going to play a very great role in realized white team, in bond valuation, in bond immunization strategy, etc. Everybody following not. The subject is very simple only. IPCC only comes in what? Final. But we'll be just applying it in what? The real world situation. Everybody following not. So this is what is the understanding. Can I was say now? Continue writing. In the above calculation, same point you continue writing. In the above calculation, in the above calculation, in the above calculation, it is presumed that, in the above calculation, it is presumed that the interest cash flows are reinvested back in the above, the, okay, in the above calculations, it is presumed that the interest cash flows are reinvested back. The interest cash flows are reinvested back at how much percent? 10 percent. The interest cash flows are reinvested back at 10 percent. Are reinvested back at 10 percent. Are not. Are not consumed. Are not consumed. There's something called as reinvestment. Something called as what? Withdrawn. When I say withdrawn, I call as what? Consumption of money. The interest is reinvested back at 10% or not consumed. Okay. This is the point I just wanted to highlight. With this, the point number one is what? What is point number one? Present value of a single cash flow. Can I proceed or not? No. Another 15 minutes is that. Okay. I'll complete annuity cash flow, leave you. Can I proceed or not? No. Don't ask here. Yeah. This 950 in class timing or not? No, write down. Annuity cash flow. Example 2 is annuity cash flow. Please. I'll try to complete as fast as possible. Example 2. All in your hands. Okay. Example 2. Annuity cash flow. Example 2. Annuity cash flows. The annuity is a very important concept. Not only in bond. Leasing will be discussing a chapter where the lease rentals are generally annuities of different types. Hence, we discuss this. Example 2 is annuity cash flows. Please. Shh. Annuity cash flows. Shall I proceed or not? No. Let us see how to find out the present value of this cash flow. 1 lakh received after 1 year, 1 lakh received after 2 years, 1 lakh received after 3 years. Is equal to 3 lakhs today. True or false? False. It should be more than 3 lakhs or less than 3 lakhs? Less than 3 lakhs. Obviously. I don't know how to calculate this. I can view this as 3 single cash flows. Discount 1 lakh at the percent value factor for 1 year, another 1 lakh at the percent value factor for 2 years, and that at what percent value factor for 3 years. 3 does a 3 single cash flows and then add it. Respond. Are you following or not? Now, let's do it together. Write down solution. Year, cash flow, percent value factor, discounted cash flow. You can call it as alternative 1. You can ask alternative 1. Year, cash flow, PVF, and then discounted cash flow. Okay. Tell me how many years? 1, 2, 3. Year 1, 2 and then 3. What the cash flow for the 3 years? 1 lakh, 1 lakh, 1 lakh. This is what is really happening. 1 lakh, 1 lakh and 1 lakh in that problem. Now tell me the interest rate is obviously 10% for all our sums. Right or not? Now tell me now you should know to use a calculator or not. 1 divided by 1.10 is equal to what's the number? 0.9091. Another is equal to what's the number? 0.8264. Another is equal to what's the number? 0.7513. Yes or no? 1 rupee received after 1 year is equal to how much today? 90 by Z. 1 rupee after 2 years is what only how much? 80 by Z. 1 rupee after 3 years is what today? 75 by Z. 90,910, 82,640, 75,130. 90,910. 82, 640, 75, 130. Can I add the second column? 1 lakh, 1 lakh, 1 lakh? No. But can I add the last column? Yes. What discount cash flow? 2 lakh, 48, 680. 
2,48,680. Tell me, 1 lakh, 1 lakh, 1 lakh received for 3 years is as good as how much is being in bulk today? 2,48,680. How much these 3 will mature? The same maturity will be getting from what? 2,48,680. Everybody, are you following or not? No. Now, see, in this calculation, how I got it? 1 lakh into 0.9091. Plus 1 lakh into 0.8264 plus 1 lakh into 0.7513. Right or not? In all the three, 1 lakh common or not? Right on alternative 2. Right alternative 2. 1 lakh into 0.9091 plus 1 lakh into 0.9091 plus 1 lakh into 0.8264 1 lakh into 0.9091 plus 1 lakh into 0.8264 plus 1. 1 lakh into 0.7513 plus 1 lakh into 0.7513. In these calculations, what I can take outside? 1 lakh. Take 1 lakh outside. I get 1 lakh into at 1 lakh into 0.9091 plus 0.8264 plus 0.7513. 1 lakh into 0.9091 plus 0.8264 plus 0.7513 plus 0.7513. Respond. Are you following or not? Now, if I add the 3, what I get? 1 lakh into 2.4868. 1 lakh into 2.4868. 1 lakh into 2.4868. Tell me, what is this 1 lakh cash flow? Annuity cash flow. This 2.4868, I now call as what? Present value annuity factor. PVAF, you can call present value annuity factor. Simply AF also okay. Present value annuity factor. And this is called as discounted cash flow. 248.68 is called as discounted cash flow. 1 lakh into 2.4868 gives you 248.680. Respond, yeah. Are you following on? Can I proceed further? No. See. One minute, I'll leave you now. Don't be in a hurry. See. Here, cash flow, present value, annuity factor, and then what? Discounted cash flow. For a single cash flow, it is PVF. For annuity, is going to be what? PVAF. How will write? 1 to 3 years, the cash flow is 1 lakh. It is 2.4868. The discounted cash flow is 2 lakh 48,680. Is our presentation right or not? Now, so here cash flow PVAF and then discounted cash flow 1 to 3, 1 lakh. 2.4868. 2 lakh 48,680. 2 lakh 48,680. Please. Last point, I'll discuss and leave you. Okay. Now, see. How to calculate this annuity factor? Question arises us no. How we calculate PVF three ways? 1 by 1 plus R power N. Or see the table. Or use a calculator. Right or not? Now, let's see how to calculate the annuity factor. Write down PVAF. Write along with me. Branch it into four. Now, how many ways here? Four ways of calculating it. Branch it into four. Okay, branch it into four. First is formula. First is calculating using formula. Second is sigma PVF. There's a total of what? Present value factor. The word sigma means summation. And third is table. And fourth is what we normally use. What is the idea? Calculator. Table and then calculator. Now, formula is 1 by R into the formula is 1 by r into 1 minus 1 by 1 plus r power n. What the formula? 1 by r into 1 minus 1 by 1 plus r power n. If I substitute, what is r in this case? 10 percent. Point 0.1 no? 1 by 0 0.10 into 1 by 0 0.10 into 1 minus 1 by 1.10 power 3. 3 annuities are not. 1 by 0 0.10 into 1 minus 1 1.10 power 3. Is equal to how much number? 2.4868. Is equal to 2.4868. Or 69 something, 2.4868. Can I present or not? Now, sigma present value factor means, how many years? 3 years. 
the first year PV is 0.9091. What is second year PV is 0.8264. Third year is how much? 0.7513. If I total, I get how much? 2.4868. So, annual divide is nothing but what? Total of present value factor. Sigma PV. It is sigma present value factor. Sigma present value factor. Here, see what table? Annuity table. See annuity table. What person? R person N years. See annuity table R person N years. Exams will give you the factor straight away. See annuity table R person N years. How much person? 10 person 3 years. 10 person then 3 years. You will be getting 2.4868. You should be getting 2.4868. Okay. Now, calculator the simplest. It is going to be what? Simplest. Take the calculator. Cancel everything. First type. First type what? 1 by 1.10. You have typed or not? First type 1 by 1.10. How many years? 3 years. Press is equal to how many times? Press is equal to key. How many times here? 3 times. Don't do anything. GT button is signed the calculator or not? Press the grand total key. What is the grand total? Press what? GT. You will be getting how much here? 2.4868. Now the grand total always has the is equal to numbers. Are you following what I am Press what? GT. I will be getting the annuity straight away. If you don't have grand total, what you should do? Buy one calculator with what? Grand total. Don't use memory plus. Don't use memory plus because sometimes you will forget. Are you following on? Or maybe press what two times and so on. So don't take risk. May I calculate with what? Grand total. Is how we have to find out the annuity factor. Respond. Yes or no? No. One minute. Tomorrow class I have to announce or not? I will announce. Okay. Now. Tomorrow we will be having class from 10 to 3.30. 10 to what? I will just take that cost and say. So my answer is 10 to 3. I will be having. Sad is having at what time the direct test class? I'll go up to 10 to 3. I'll give sufficient lunch break in between. Okay, I'll be having class from 10 to 3.